Hi, this is 5.1 Linear Algebra, and we want to look at eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Here's the idea. If we want to create a dilation of a vector, a dilation could be uh, expanding it or contracting it. And we have a vector right here, 1, 1, very simple one, and we're going to try to dilate it by a factor of 2. And so if I do that with a scalar, that's very easy. I just take 2 times my vector 1, 1, and then I just, uh, that's just going to give me the 2, 2. Now, what if I want to try to find a matrix that will do this same thing? So instead of putting this scalar out in front, I want to put a matrix out in front and do that. Can we do that? Well, for certain values that I put out here, yes. And for other values, no. So, but it, it would be for a certain matrix. So what we want to do is try this matrix right here and see what happens. I'm going to be doing most of this by uh, using software to make the multiplication, but you should be doing this yourself just to make sure that it does work. So if I take A times B here, A times B gives me my 2, 2. What does that mean? Well, that means that I took the vector 1, 1, and I dilated it by a factor of 2. Wow, this matrix, that worked. Okay, now for this matrix A, what we're going to end up with is what we call an eigenvector. This would be an example of an eigenvector right here. The eigenvalue that's associated with this would be a 2. Now, uh, this matrix isn't associated with every single value that you can get. There's certain eigenvalues that work for this, and then there's certain eigenvectors that work with, with this matrix too. Okay, so it's not an infinite number of solutions and all that kind of stuff, uh, unless you just look at the magnification, but yes, this is just going to be what we end up with. What I've done is I've taken some matrix A, multiplied it by this vector, and that's going to be the same thing as taking some constant, this is lambda, Greek letter lambda, and multiplying it by uh, the vector 2. And some language here, this is going to be an eigenvector, this is going to be an eigenvalue, 4a. These are specific to a in this case. But I have it written right here too. Okay, so what if we want to show that 3, 3 is also an eigenvector for a? Well, I have this already loaded in here, and all I have to do is make some matrix C. Let me make a capital. And then that's going to be a new matrix. And I want to cut down on the number of columns, 3, 3. And now what I want to do is take A times C. And do you think that this will be a factor of what we started from? Sure. So 3, 3 goes to 6, 6. So therefore, 3, 3 is also an eigenvector for my matrix A. But if you notice, it is just a dilation of this original one that we had. So I could take this one to represent all these other ones that I do get, or I could take this one to represent all the other ones. I, it, you, just, you are probably going to take one when we start forming a basis. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But now this one, this example says show that 2, negative 1 is an eigenvector for A. So when I multiply A times this, and remember what, what A is up here, this is A. When A times this, I'm going to get some multiple of this vector that we do have right here. So let's try that. And so I got it all set up in here. So if I take A times C, look what I get. I get 1, 7. Huh. Is that a multiple of 2, negative 1? And I think you can clearly see that would be no. So the question is, is that an eigenvector for uh, our matrix A? And the answer would be no. It is not, so I kind of pulled a fast one on you. This one right here, this should say, actually show that this is not an eigenvector for A. And we just did that. So let's review this now. So 3, 3 is an eigenvector for A. And that's what I've summarized here. 2, negative 1 is not an eigenvector for A. Now for this particular uh, lambda, which is 2, that would be this line. In fact, we're going to be able to generate all the vectors along this line. And when we do that, what's happening is that any vector that's on this line is going to be an eigenvector for 
this particular A. And there might be another one that's, it, uh, that's involved for a different lamina that we haven't looked at. We'll look at that and how to find that in 5.2. But I hope that makes sense. So if I take 3, 3, yes, that's going to be an eigenvector. If I take negative 57, negative 57, yes, that's going to be an eigenvector for A. All of those are going to work with lamina equaling 2. And so what we call this, we call this the eigenspace that we just created. And that would just be this one long line and all the vectors along that line that would work for this matrix A. Whatever I'm going to multiply by this A is going to get me back another multiple of, uh, of that vector. In fact, it's going to be double because lambda is equal to 2. I hope that makes sense. So in summary here, for lambda equal to 2 of matrix A, specifically to A, one, one forms a basic basis for the eigenspace. In this case, the eigenspace is a subset of R2. Since I've been two dimensions here, I'm going to stay in two dimensions, which happens to be the line. It includes zero and abides by our scalar and addition rules for a subspace. Therefore, for matrix A, there might be, uh, oh no, so then therefore it is a subspace. And then we call this the eigenspace right here. And like I said, for matrix A, there may be another eigenvalue in eigenspace which we'll learn and try to find from section 5.2. Okay, so let's try this setup. We want to try to solve this situation. I hope you would agree that what we're doing is taking matrix A, multiplying it by some vector, which is the eigenvector, and that's going to be equal to the eigenvalue times that vector. In other words, this dilation can also be created by a matrix times that vector. So then what I want to do is just bring this one over to the other side. And now I know that this is going to be equal to zero. What I want to do is try to factor out this vector x and see what I end up with. Now I'm going to do a little strange thing and then I'll come back and try to explain it with the next step. This is what the, this is the equation that we do want now. So I factored out the x vector. Since it's on the right side, I got to keep it right justified. I factored out the a and I factored out the lambda. Except for the lambda only works and this operation only works if this whole thing is a matrix. And so I did lambda i. Now why can I do that? And I'll show a simple example to do that. For instance, I had a scalar times this matrix, this two by two matrix. What I can do is I can actually take that seven and turn it into a different product to make this work. The question is if I take seven times this matrix, is that exactly the same thing as taking seven times this identity matrix times the same matrix. And I think you'd see that the answer is yes. So with this right here, this is just going to be this matrix right here. And then I take the seven times, it's gonna, it's gonna be exactly the same thing. So when I do this up this, in this equation, I'm just taking the constant and I multiply it by I because this is a matrix. In order to subtract a matrix from a matrix, I gotta have the same exact dimensions. And so that's what I'm doing. And notice that A is a square matrix that we've been dealing with so far. I hope that makes sense. So that's why I ended up with this equation right here. Now this is the power equation that we're going to be using in order to uh, figure things out. Now that we have this equation, we're going to try to find non-trivial solutions. I don't want, I'm not worried about the uh, x vector uh, being zero, the zero vector right now. Okay, so we want to find non-trivial solutions for this. If we want to find non-trivial solutions, what does that mean about this matrix right here? A minus lambda i. Think about that for a second. Pause this if you have to and think about what that means. So here's an example here. Let A, now we got a three by three matrix uh, and this is matrix A with lambda equal to two. Find an eigenvector and a basis for this matrix A. So let's do the crank out work first. We're actually going to let Desmos do that for us with lambda equaling to 2, and then we want to find the eigenvector and the basis for this. So I'm going to take this matrix, and I'm going to go ahead and subtract this uh, lambda equal to 2 matrix from that. My A matrix, here's my 2 times my identity matrix, and then what I want to do is go ahead and subtract those. So A minus my B, and then... Oh, look at that. Look what happens when we do that. Now, uh, I might 
want to do this instead, but I can see what's happening right now. We want to do this, A minus B, and look at that. We have these two rows that are zeros. So my first question is, is did we satisfy the dependence? In other words, that the matrix is going to give us non-trivial solutions. If it's dependent, which obviously this was, columns are dependent, uh, what we'll end up with then is a situation where we can find the eigenvector, uh, the eigenvector for this, and that's what we want to do. I would have done this same exact process and gotten a pivot in each one of these spots right here. Then we would be independent. And if we are independent, then that is not the eigenvector for what we're dealing with. Okay, so that's how you can show if a vector is going to be, or a, a eigenvalue is going to be an eigenvalue for that matrix. I would throw this in here. Dependence is the key to make all this happen for eigenvalues, eigenvectors. So to review again, A, which was this matrix, minus lambda I, which was this matrix, we get this result. If this is dependent, then we're on our way. If it's independent, then uh, this value was incorrect. That would not be an eigenvalue for our matrix. And once we reduce it, this should be an augmented matrix with a column of zeros here when we did that because I'm solving this thing equal to zero. This should be a vector. But uh, we end up with this right here. Now, if you notice, we have an infinite number of solutions. So when we figure this one out, this is going to be my x1 is equal to 0.5x2 minus 3x3. And any vectors that are going to fit that form are going to be our eigenvectors for what we have. We get the vectors now for this is that, well, we know that x1 is equal to 0.5x2, which is uh, minus 3x3 and x2 is equal to x2, and x3 is equal to x3. So all we need to do is write that into our vector form, which I do have right here, and then that will tell us exactly what we need for our basis and to form our basis. All right? So the this vector right here and this vector right here will form the basis for our vector space. If we don't like this fraction, we can multiply this whole vector by 2 if we want. Okay? Now... Look at the picture that I put over here. This picture is exactly uh, this vector and this vector put in there. And I think I multiplied this one by two though. Anything in this plane is going to be part of the eigenspace for this matrix right here. So let me see if I can, I think I got this up here. And so here's this right here. So any vector that's in here will be a vector that when I apply that matrix to it, it's going to end up being a multiple of whatever vector I gave you. And so maybe it goes off and extends out this way. But um, somehow, some way, if I have a vector here in this plane and I multiply that by the, uh, the matrix by that, it's just going to be a multiple of that. It's going to be a dilation. And they're all going to go through zero, zero. That's one of our attributes to get our subspace. So everything goes through zero, zero. And so here's my plane. My plane is not R2. It's a plane in R3, but it is a subspace of R3. I hope that kind of makes sense. Yes, I did go ahead and take that 0.5 and multiply it by 2 and take the 1 multiply by 2, and I got this vector U. So that would still form a basis for our plane that's in R3, which is our eigenspace for this particular matrix. So now going back to this, this could be an option for the eigenspace basis. And then also this one could be two. And this one just cleared the fractions on that first vector. That's all it's doing. And so then it's just a multiple of one of these vectors. And so it doesn't matter. It's going gonna, it's gonna to form this plane and be a basis for this plane, which is the eigenspace for this matrix. Sorry if I'm redundant there, but I have to make that point. What's kind of fun now is that since I made this plane on GeoGebra, they gave me an equation of the plane, which you'll do more in multivariable, 
but they gave me the equation of the plane for the uh, two vectors that I do have there. Well, that's kind of cool because what I can do is I can make another vector. So I plugged in zero and then I could plug in six and one and that would give me a zero. So this W is another vector, vector in this eigenspace. So if I plot that, oh, it's just something that's going off on the side here, something different, okay? Well, what that tells us then is that that vector right there is also going to be uh, able to be applied to the matrix so that we can dilate this vector right here. And since lambda is equal to two, we're gonna dilate it by how much? Well, yeah, two. Verify that assertion here. So I'm saying that now I just took any vector that's in that eigenspace. And so if I take A times that, I should get another vector that is a multiple of B. 0, 6, 1, 0, 12, 2. Since lambda is equal to 2, what did it do? It, it dilated it by a factor of 2. Woohoo! That's kind of cool. That's fun. So that's what these eigen vectors and eigenspaces, eigen values are going to do for us. It's a matrix that's going to act like a scalar. Kind of cool. And we want to classify all these things. And then th this has a bunch of applications in the real world. So that's why we're trying to do this. Okay, so here's another question. Is lambda equal to negative 2 an eigenvalue for A? What do we need to do? Well, we need to go back to this equation right here and verify when we do row reduction that we get a dependent situation. So if I go to my Desmos calculator, I got this all set up. Here's A, here's B, and then when we subtract, make sure you go for minus negative two. When you do this by hand, you do some of these by hand, some of these with technology. And then I get this matrix here. Then if I do row reduce echelon form, this is one way to show, of the A minus B, Look at that. So is lambda equal to negative two an eigenvalue for this matrix? And the answer would be no. We do not end up with a dependent situation. And so I don't have free variables. I need free variables in order for this thing to work. Uh, and so this one would be a no. There's the work for what we have. Okay, last example. Uh, we know that we need non-trivial solution for this. And then, so what has to be my determinant? My determinant of the matrix, if we have a dependent situation, we know that that determinant is going to be zero. And so when we look at a triangular matrix, what kind of assumptions can you make when I take this main diagonal and subtract it by the eigenvectors? How am I going to get that determinant to be zero? Add it in the zero up here, so you do that in your notes. And so if I want the determinant of my a minus lambda i to be zero, one of these entries when I do the subtraction has to be zero. In order for that to happen, that means my eigenvector has to be either two or it has to be one or it has to be negative four. And so that tells me in a triangular matrix straight away what my lambdas are. So I got lambda equal to any one of those. And then if I go to my Desmos here, here's that matrix, triangular matrix I had. I did uh, put in lambda equal to two times the identity matrix. And so if I do the re row reduction, notice I do get a dependent situation. If I get a dependent situation, what I can do also is just say, okay, I want the determinant of my A minus lambda I, which is B in this case, and sure enough, that determinant is equal to zero. So the only way that we can do that with a triangular matrix is if the main diagonal values are going to be our lambda. And in fact, this, in this case, we get three lambdas instead of two from, we, from what we've got in the previous situation. All right, I've spoken too much. The assignment should be at the bottom of the page. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Take care. Introduction. Thanks.